welcome to Better Love and Sex. I am your host, Davey Ward, and I want to thank you for tuning in and joining us this evening for another titillating. I like that word. We should take a poll. Which Do you guys like succulent, titillating, or juicy conversation? Exploring ways for you, me, all of us to awaken, heal, and transform our sexuality so that we can have more love and better sex in our lives. Because who doesn't want both of those options on the table? Today, I have a special guest, Tamarin, and we are going to be talking about sexual fantasy exploration, and we're going to talk about my sexual fantasies as well. We're going to use me as a guinea pig. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our beautiful guest, Tamarin. Hello, Tamarin. Hello, Debbie. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. I'm very excited. I am so excited too, and I'm going to, so everybody out there, I've known Tamron for a while. Tamron is a host of her own radio show. You bet. <laughs> so she's on Voice America, how, the Health and Wellness Channel. That's actually how I met Tamron. I was on her show, uh, Let's Figure It Out, which has since become Let's Figure It Out Intimately. And uh, yeah, and we co-hosted a couple shows, and it was just a blast. I love working with Tamron. Yes, yes. I love it when I can speak about sex and just fun stuff. So yeah. it's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a little bit about you. So to, so our audience knows. So Tamarin is a sexual intimacy and lifestyle expert. And she's a genuine alchemist who helps women and couples discover their own intimate sexual desires. She loves helping her clients restore the fun and passion to their sex lives. So they create true intimacy and feel fulfilled in their relationship. She teaches her clients about their unique sex secret language. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what that is. And uh, she guides them through sexual fantasy interpretation and shares great tips and techniques from other experts. And that is so true. I so We're all so hooked up with Tamarin. We're all interconnected. So thank you again, Tamarin, for being here. Uh, oh, thanks, Debbie. And yeah, you're one of the people that I do talk about in my secret sex language program because I love your book and actually... For anybody who does come to that event, which is a couples event, it's a private one-on-one -on -one full day event with couples. We'll talk a little bit more about that during the show, but um, everybody gets a little gift bag to go home with. And your book, Shake Your Soul Song, is one of the bonus gifts that I give out because women, I'm finding women need to understand more about their own bodies. And uh, you had a very powerful message in that book. Definitely changed my life. I talk about it all the time. So yeah, it's actually a little bonus gift. Oh, what an honor. Yay, that's so great. So I want to dive right in because I want to know, what is this sexual fantasy exploration? Is that is that a program that you offer? It actually is, Debbie. Um, and it all came about because I hired this amazing woman from the States, and she was able to take someone like me who just has like a million ideas. And, you know, people come to me with different problems and whatever. And she said to me, Tamara, you need to create like a – a signature program, something that really defines who you are. And that's how we came up with my secret sex language program, which is my signature program, the full day event. And in that program, I have seven different modules that I talk to couples about. And it's interesting when working with people how, you know, men and women separately have different areas about uh, sexual expression, um, you know, where they differ. And so if when you're in a relationship with someone, and this has been in my past too, I've had different lovers, I've been single, married, divorced, celibate, the whole bit, I've gone through ups and downs, good and bad, amazing sex, crappy sex, whatever, it doesn't matter, but sometimes, you know, when you're with a partner, if you're not communicating, if you're not talking about what issues are coming up, good and bad, you know, I like this, or felt comfortable with that, or whatever, um, there can be problems, and so what I try to do with people is just talk about those different areas of sexual expression and one of the areas that I do talk about in that full day program is near the end of the day and it's where we take all the different components of sexual expression and then we start to put it together and we play with a fantasy. So I run that program, that workshop, which is on my website called um, uh, oh, geez, I have to make sure I get it right. It's called uh, Explore Your Fantasy and Reignite Your Sex Life. 
And so in that two and a half hour workshop, um, we take a specific fantasy once a month, which this month in September, it's all about bondage. So it's about, you know, being tied up. It's about, you know, being blindfolded and um, really honoring your partner in something like that. So when we take a fantasy and we play it out, we don't actually act it out. No one's having sex. You have your clothes on. Nobody's nude, you know, whatever. Um, I teach the couples, because it could be gay couples as well, it really doesn't matter, but I teach couples how to understand what the fantasy is all about. And if you and I, let's say you and I were acting out the scenario during the workshop about having, um, uh, being together and say, you're tying me up and you're blindfolding me. Well, in my mind, I have a vision because I've never experienced this. So this is for couples that really want to explore and strengthen their relationships. I have a vision based on maybe I've seen porn, maybe I haven't, maybe I've read a book, maybe I've read some fiction. I've never had this experience. So I have a vision of what I think is going to happen. And then you have a completely separate vision of what you think is going to happen based on your experiences of what you know or whatever, or maybe you've had an experience of it. It really doesn't matter. So we have these two videos or two movies playing Mm -hmm. at once. And so a lot of times people won't say yes to exploring with their partners because they haven't talked about what they think is going to happen or what it actually means or how it can empower someone. Um, People talk too much, in my opinion, and just what I've learned in the past about the physical stuff, and they don't really get into the empowerment of the emotional and the mental connection that can occur when you explore sexual fantasies. So it's very powerful. So in this workshop that you're describing, the exploring your sexual fantasies that you have on your website, so you actually, so if I were to go with my, with a partner and we would actually, and so it's a bondage one. So we'd have all our clothes on and I would come and, and, but you would like coach us through the process of tying each other up and, and communicating about what's going on for us. That sounds like a hoot. I know. It's like date night. (laughs) It's like your show. You're talking about date night with you and uh, Jacques. It's like, you know what? This is what it's all about. It's just teaching people how to get that fun and that passion because the majority of my clientele are older. A 30 and up, you know, majority of people might be... um, I tend to attract older people, but I have been getting some younger couples um, who've actually approached me and said, look, we're newly together. We're newly married. We want to start off right. And I'm like, wow, that's another market. Never thought about that. But generally, I seem to attract people who um, are in their 40s and up. Kids might have been out of the house. Uh, You know, they're trying to restore the marriage, empty nest syndrome, the whole bit. You know, it's like time for us, right? And we get lost in that. And I definitely had that in my marriage. I was with my partner for 13 years. And, you know, sometimes life just gets in the way. It's not that you don't love your partner anymore because, in my opinion, love and sex are two different things. You know, so I want people to just, you know, it's my life. It was my life. And this is how I created the signature program because, and I'm offering these workshops is because it was my life. And that's why I'm the expert. I'm not a sex expert. I'm not someone like you has had all this training and, you know, whatever. I've just taken the stories of my life and my experiences, both good and bad. And I've decided to help people because that's what people were coming to me for. They're coming to me for advice and they've watched me and they've seen um, the path I've been on and my ups and downs and they see me on the other side now. And I mean, I just love my life. I, you know, I meet amazing people, you know, my work, um, you know, I'm connected to incredible people. And my kids even say, mom, you should walk around with a video camera around you because everywhere you go, it's an adventure. I said, I know. (laughs) Like I I should, I just go walk the dog. People stop me on the street and they're like, wow, you know, you changed my life. And ah, so I just love it. I just love it all. Yeah, so so helping people, supporting couples and experiencing more intimacy and passion is like, it's really gratifying and really it's like celebrating. And we were talking earlier before the show about how our sexual, our sexuality and our sexual expression is so interconnected to every other area of our lives. How have you seen that show up for, for you and your clients? Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, you say that, Debbie, because... As a healer myself, and I've done a lot of energy work and a lot of classes, um, what I have found in working with people, because I am a certified health coach and I've, I've worked with other modalities and stuff, so I'm very into the holistic field, I see a, I see a pattern when people talk to me. So people come to me with a story 
right? So let's just pull something out of the, I mean, we're women, you know, you probably have a lot of women listening. So, and I'm sure you get this a lot too, because you talk about it in your book. So let's say, for example, a woman comes to me and says, you know what? I'm with my partner, you know, I'm just not into him anymore. Like I don't have an orgasm, right? Mm -hmm. So I say to people, well, from what I've read and from the experts and people and books I've read and stuff like that, you know, it is physical. But there is also an emotional, mental connection to that. So we need to figure out why, um, you know, you're not having that orgasm. So let's start talking about, you know, some of the things that have happened in your relationship with your partner. And sure enough, you know, there's a pattern. So people come to me with this, quote, problem. But when they talk to me, I hear a story from their body. It's like their body has the story. And so when I say to people, okay, so for example, you know, this is what I'm hearing. I take notes. I take notes with every single person I work with or couples or whatever because I'm hearing a story and I have to play it back to them. So I listen to how they tell me the story and then I go back in and I go, okay, so this is what I heard, right? And so you and I can do this with a fantasy. You know, we can play with this later. And so this is what I hear. And so, and I say, is that correct for you or does it ring a bell and let's get the story straight so and lo and behold people go I didn't realize what that was and so when you unleash what it is that's holding them back and what the issue is so that they aren't having an orgasm say in this example then they can let it go right and then once they let it go then not only because chances are if it's an if it's an emotional thing like you're talking about or a psychological thing it's it's showing up in other areas of their lives as well right it's holding them back from other areas so if they're able to process it and let it go and that that sexual energy is freed up it's also freed up in other areas of their life yeah exactly because we're human beings and so i've always said and i've learned this and all the modalities that i've taught you is whatever you're doing in one aspect of your life it is a domino effect so it's going to be showing up for you in other areas as well and that could be um you know your the way you uh your partnerships with your children it could be your boss it could be the workforce it could be in schooling like that common denominator um is everywhere and when you start peeling away it's just like in the movie shrek when you start peeling away the layers of that onion and you start to see um, bigger lessons you start to see more um, divine purpose more more things what you were here to learn so a bigger picture of a challenge that is in your life is going to be so predominant and then when you can balance it out and understand it that's when you switch and you go into the positive so it's just like being an athlete I'll use an athlete for example If you are an athlete and, you know, you're struggling and you're wanting to be really good at something, you're going to have a strength in one area of your sport and you're going to have a weakness. And what you need to do is in order to be top of your field, you have to turn your weakness into your strength. But you don't know what that weakness is yet. So you need to figure out what it is, right? And then, then you've got that balance. So what about so – I am I really want to explore my – I want to use me as a guinea pig and do my sexual fantasy. But before that, so you talked about, you talk about sexual personality and, and sexual archetypes. So what is a sexual personality? Well, same type of thing. I, you know, I see a lot of people writing. I mean, I love some people's work about archetypes. Carolyn Miss is one of my all-time favorite authors. I got to meet her again last month. She was here in Toronto. Um, archetypes are, um, you know, they're universal. They're patterns of behavior that, you know, we can all relate to. Like, you know, um, the actress, the writer, the performer, you know, the singer, blah, blah, blah. But we also have sexual archetypes. And, you know, I've read some people work about sexual archetypes like a woman said to me one time oh you are an artemis and she goes let me ask you something she goes if a man was to come up to you and say hey honey go put something sexy on and lie on the bed and wait for me she goes how would you feel i said i would be totally revolted i would not be turned on in fact i'd probably get up and leave and she goes exactly she goes because you don't have that archetype she goes what turns you on I said if I am outside if I'm barefoot if I'm like digging in the flowers with my hands and my hands are dirty and I'm sweating I've got my hair pulled back I feel like I've accomplished something and that makes me feel sexy and she goes exactly so when is it men approach you and I go usually at the gym like when I'm sweating and gungy and haven't showered and whatever because my body releases these endorphins right so all women and men have different sexual archetypes and so we need to understand that about ourselves and not 
not put ourselves into categories with other women. And I think that's where a lot of dysfunction is in uh, relationships where a lot of women, for, let's say, for example, women think that they have to have the perfect body. Women think that they have to have, you know, the perfect hair and, you know, whatever, because that's going to make men want them. And the truth is that's not real. And so I, that's what I'm calling is a sexual archetype. So it's not the traditional archetypes that we see, but it's the archetypes that we, that we perceive or that we want us to be. And, and we're so busy trying to be this that we don't understand who we really are. And that's why doing the sexual fantasy explorations, we get to see the roles that, you know, you're either afraid of or that you want and you're trying to be. And is there, you know, is there an imbalance in there? And it'll show up in a fantasy when we start talking. It's like, let's play it out, you know. Um, so it's not always negative. Um, but I'm just saying it's fun to understand who you are because now after that woman said that, to me, Debbie, I felt so powerful as a woman, and I thought, now I'm not going to be offended, um, and thinking I'm less than any other woman when my friends want to go out strutting around for lingerie and high heels, because mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable in high heels and lingerie. I, I, my body, I, I, I'm shaped like a man. Lingerie is not comfortable. They don't make it for women like me. They make it for these hourglass, tiny little women, and it's friggin' uncomfortable, <laughs> right? <laughs> So, Absolutely. I mean, I'd rather be naked and barefoot and, cl- and fresh out of the shower. Like, to me, that's sexy. So oh, I right. attract men who see that in me and they're like, yeah, I, I, and I tend to attract men that really don't care about lingerie or, you know, that they need to dress up. But we need to understand that, you know. Right, so it, yeah. It's just fun. But when you know who you are, it gives you that confidence. And to me, sexy when you're confident, you know that. When you feel confident, you feel sexy. It's not about the, the mirror or, or the image we see in the mirror. Absolutely. All right. Is there anything more about that or should we just dive into Miss Davy? Yeah, come on, Debbie. Let's have some fun. Let's play <laughs> <a> fantasy. <laughs> okay. It's what it's right. about. So, uh, okay, so, 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 okay, so you do your process and I'll answer your questions. <laughs> okay, so let's pretend whether, okay, so right off the bat, what I ask people is, and this is very true, um, and I wrote an article about this a while ago too, when I started talking about sexual fantasies. Um, the truth is, you know, a lot of people will say, yes, I either have a fantasy and uh, lived it out. Some people will say, I have a fantasy. I've never lived it out. I've told my partner. Some people could be like, Yes, I have a, san- a fantasy, but I am terrified to tell my partner. And then some people don't even think they have one at all. So, like, there's different variables, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and you're, you're, you know, so if someone's to come to my workshop, you know, whether they have one or not, what I'm trying to do is to just get them have fun talking about a fantasy. And then, you know, as they give themselves permission to play and to be this sexual person in their mind or whatever, it gives them the confidence, just like we were talking about earlier. And then, you know, they can move forward and they can start speaking to their partner as well. So why don't we pretend that you and I are in a fantasy together? How about we do something like that? Uh, okay, you and I can be in a fantasy together. That would be great. Okay. Either or that, or do you want to pick one? What do you think? Well, it's not going to matter how we do it. Uh, well, do I want to pick one? Well, um, do you want me to share some of my fantasies? Because I have a couple. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. so pick one. What's your favorite? Something you've never done yet. Let's pretend it's not, It's you know, because the people coming to me are something, you know, they haven't done this. Okay, well, I'm kind of scared about it, and I haven't done it yet but it's i'll probably do it sometime in the near future is having sex uh with somebody at a like a swingers party or around lots of other people okay so could it be like at a sex club or do you want like a private party uh i think a private party would probably be better Okay. All right. So that's your fantasy. So now, for example, and this is good because actually this is one of the issues that I've actually had with one of my lovers too, because he wants to go to the clubs and I keep saying, I've been to the clubs and to me, it's too much. There's too much going on. And, um, I would rather have a private party. So I said to him, Hey, I'd help you organize a private party. Okay. So now in your mind, if, um, if you have this fantasy and you've never explored it, when you imagine this fantasy um, in your head, what do you think is going to happen? Like, what comes up for you right off the bat? 
Um, what do I think is going to happen? I, I'm imagining, so I'm imagining that there's other, I'm kind of seeing myself like reclined on some kind of lounge or couch or something. And I'm imagining that there's probably like at least one person that I'm actually having intercourse with and maybe possibly somebody else touching me and stroking me and then other people kind of around in the area and then maybe people even watching. All right. Okay. So and it's you're... dark, dark room with like maybe some candles and like lots of pillows, and uh, it all smells very good, like incense. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta have that. We gotta Oils. Set the scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got some. We got a diffuser going with that uh, our spiritual sex cosmos blend and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, did you ever see the movie uh, The Perfect Orgy? No, I never saw it. I'll write that down to watch it, though. That sounds you great. you got to watch it, because I can't believe you and I have the same fantasy. Okay, this is so cool. All right, so now in this fantasy that you're imagining, okay, so you're having intercourse with someone. There's someone standing nearby that could be stroking you and whatever, and then there's other people watching. Okay, so in this fantasy right now, we're going to look at two different things. So we're going to do one thing at a time. What in this part, when say this is starting in the fantasy, pardon me, in the fantasy, what is, what do you think could bother you? What is going to scare you? Well, the, I think that's the titillating part is what scares me is other people watching. So, okay, so I've had threesomes before, right? And it's like just me and my partner and then somebody else. I've done like lots of that. And that's fun because it's like you're, it's just all you together. You're like totally, you're in the zone, right? You're all just playing yep. together. So I think the thing that's kind of freaks me out is like to have people just standing there watching me. That's scary, but it's also exciting, Exactly. Okay, so we're going to talk, and it's exciting at the same time. So now, exactly. this, this is exactly with me. It bothers me to know that other people are watching. Now, when you um, are thinking about other people watching, what is the emotion? What is coming up for you that you don't like? Can you can you dig into that? Because this is the fun part. What embarrassment. Is, embarrassment. Okay. Yes. All right, so this is good. So now this is something where if you were to go back and if you were to look at something in your life, I guarantee, and this is not something that we would do in the workshop because this is the homework that I give people to take home and do. Something has probably triggered in your past where you were in a situation where you may have been having sex with somebody or there was other people involved and you felt embarrassed by it. So that's what I ask people to do is to start talking about it. And so when we realize when this actually happened and the fact that it came up so fast for you that you were embarrassed, now you can let it go. Because well, I keep the nugget. Okay. Okay, right. So so I get that. But don't you think like, okay, so but it is kind of embarrassing, you know, like, I don't know how many people are like, yeah, I want a whole bunch of people standing around watching me have sex. Like, that's the thing, like in, in love scenes and movies, like people are like, oh, I don't know how they could do that and have everybody watching in the cameras on them, right? So okay. it's, it's kind of human, human nature to be a little bit like to, you know, that you got a needs for privacy. You don't necessarily like, I don't let people watch me poop. Yeah, but in this, because we can go deeper, this is just the beginning. So what is it you think, because this is just you we're talking about in the fantasy now, because there's different people. So now let's pretend that some people are watching, so you're enjoying the, you know, the person you're having sex with, and someone else is stroking you and massaging you and making you feel really good, and there's people watching you, and you feel embarrassed. So now I want you to tap into those people that are watching you and what in your mind do you think that those people are saying or saying to themselves that is going to make you feel embarrassed because oh, there's something right. that you're thinking. Right. Right. Isn't this cool? Yeah. So what right. Say about Debbie. What do, you, what do you think it is? Well, it, I guess the, for me, the embarrassment is, is in being seen like that, like on, you know, cause you're unmasked, right? When you're, especially yeah. when you're in the throes of pleasure, it's like, there's, there's no ego, right? There's no sense yeah. of self. So it's, you're completely transparent and completely unmasked. And I guess uh, the, I guess what I, I would want, what I would desire, this isn't what I'm thinking, they're thinking, but for me, what comes up is the desire would be that people would like be able to, to hold, hold me with love and compassion and kindness in that space. Yeah. So I guess maybe criticism is what I would be afraid of, that they'd be criticizing me or like, oh, yeah, just some any kind of criticism is what it, what the fear would be. 
Exactly. So, and we all have that. So, in your life, somewhere, you were criticized and you allowed people to criticize you. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, this moment, you got to go back into this fantasy because this is all fun play, right? So, in this moment, I'd like you and your homework is to go home and start imagining this fantasy, whether it's with you and your partner, whether he's standing beside you, and he's standing there saying, wow, isn't she sexy? Oh, my God, look at those two go. They're so connected. You know, oh, I'd love to be having sex the way those two are having. Look at the, her and Debbie. I mean, you were on film with, with Jacques, and, you know, it's like <laughs> people, you don't see what other people see in you. And that's the truth. I've had that with men, too. People are like, Tammy, stop worrying about, you know, scars from having children and whatever. You know, I enjoy being with you. I'm not standing here looking at your body. I'm connected to you. And men have pointed that out to me, and they go, just stop it. Because women in general are so critical because we think we need to have the perfect body in order to have sex because of all of this programming we've had since we were children. And men really focus on thinking that they need to be good enough, you know, and whatever. So women are more critical of our physical body. So it's so true. You, What you are going through is the same thing I go through. It's what most women do. We criticize our physical body and we criticize what we think and what people are saying about us. Like Robot. it's in our head. It's not even real. Right. Well, that's true. And you brought up a good point. So Jacques and I are on film and, you know, we're having, we don't have sexual intercourse, but I mean, it's yoni massage and lingam massage and, you know, yeah. we're basically, and I don't even think of it because it's the camera, right? It's like, it's just like, and it was, it was just intimate. It was just like us four people. I'm, you know, like a room of people. Yeah. I guess, yeah, it just gets, I guess with the more people, the scarier it gets, right? The more, because then there's... Then there's less, uh, there's less I, control or, or yeah, control over the circumstances, and then and and control over the energies in, in within the situation. I think. Right. So now, yeah. if you go back into that fantasy and you create that energy, because you and I are both energy workers, we know what all that's about. When you create that energy in your fantasy, then what right. do you attract in the real world? Right, exactly. And so then so it's just the excitement, yes. Exactly. You just go in and you just do it. And so you have to imagine those people watching you are in awe. Yeah. They are not judging you. They are like, wow. Because when I watched your video, when I was learning the Tantra secrets or, you know, your lessons and whatever, I wasn't judging you. In fact, I think you have a smoking out body. I'm like, wow, man, I wish I had her boobs. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's true. And the connection that I saw and I felt between you and Jacques was beautiful. And that's what I picked up on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're so caught up in this physical stuff. You know, um, that it's not real. It's just physical. And, you know, it amazes me even when I talk to men because men are very open with me. And, you know, they say, oh, yeah, like, don't assume that just because she had the perfect body was like the best sex I've ever had. In fact, it had nothing to do with it. It, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's it, it's so much more. I think we we develop uh, when we're adults, like we we recognize that it's so much more than just physical appearance. Absolutely, that there's so much more to connection than just what it looks like. It can look really pretty on the outside, but it could be rotten on the inside. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And so when you change that energy of your fantasy. Because, like I said, everybody's dressed, clothed, whatever. We just play it out. So you need to understand who all the players are in your fantasy. And you change the energy of that fantasy. And then when your partner, because, you know, we pick a fantasy so that people can actually play this out if they choose to um, in their own home or in their own privacy or whatever it is, wherever they're having sex together. Um, you're going to let go of these inhibitions and these judgments that we put forth in a fantasy because that's why people aren't acting out their real fantasies. People have them. 90, research shows 95% of all people have sexual fantasies, but they don't do anything about it. Right. Right. So what, so the process that you just took me through, so then like changing in my fantasy change, identifying the fear and yeah. then transforming that into, you know, love. Into support into love. That's, that's alchemy. It, that's why I'm an alchemist. Yes. 
Yes, that's alchemy. Alchemy. So identifying the pain and then transforming it into love is the process of alchemy. That's beautiful, Tamarin. I know. I love it. So then people can go home and play, and then you wait and see you, all the different fantasies where, you know, you can, because I'm going to teach them how to do it. So that's why I say you get the tools. You're going to go home with all the tools. I mean, people sometimes need my support afterwards. You know, they might get stuck on it because, you know, as a coach, it takes time to understand, to really understand what's coming up. You know, and even in some of my uh, programs, depending on which ones people buy, um, my ebook is coming out soon. We're going to have it on a Kindle. I give you the definition of all the emotions that could possibly come up so people can go, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, well, I'll go look it up. Um, right. You know, because when you really zone in on it, you know, when you got embarrassment, it's like, yeah, it's the criticism. It's that self-judgment. And we're humans. Uh, we all do it, you know. Um, so it's powerful. And now, you know, that can be created because even now, I guarantee you, even after, after having this conversation, we, we've let it go. It's gone. So I want you to send me the email <laughs> when your fantasy becomes real because you, you've you now got that energy to attract it. Because well, it might be that, happening this weekend. <laughs> well, there's no. So I want a personal, <laughs> personal phone call for you. Timmy, I'm here. It's awesome. Everyone's <laughs> loving and watching. They're videotaping. They're like, wow, I want to be. No videotapes. You got to pay for those. <laughs> Exactly, right? Um, so, you know, it's a lot of fun. And people get scared when I talk about fantasies. Again, I just want people, uh, I went through this in my own personal life, you know, to be honest, Debbie. Um, I do. I write about this. I talk about it. When I was married, I was with my partner for 13 years. There was a lot of sex in that marriage. But there was no communication. There was no talk about anything. And it came from an upbringing. I'm, I'm not here to bash my ex-husband. Um, you know, I realized I came into that partnership with 50%, and that's part of it. You know, I do talk about this in that full-day event. My secret sex language program is, you know, you're 50% of the problem. You know, it wasn't just all him. Women play a role, too. But when you understand what you're bringing into that relationship so that we can pull it apart just like I did in the fantasy and we understand what the fears and anxieties that are coming up for both partners we can let them go because I haven't met anybody that doesn't have any yeah right exactly we all have our stuff we all have our stuff and I've had some amazing lovers and you know what they still had stuff and I had stuff and maybe our stuff was different and the beauty of it is is that when you're with someone who is bringing up your stuff, in other words, where issues are coming up, that can turn into a very powerful and beautiful and transformative relationship instead of people walking away from it. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I share often that I think that, you know, the more intimate the relationship, the more that it's a perfect platforms for one of, most of our, our deepest core wounding to arise. And it's coming up for healing. It's, it's coming up so that we can be freed from it and healed and transformed. Exactly. So, and people just give up because there, I just don't think enough people are looking at, I think a lot of us are searching more, but you know, um, being out there, being single and out in the dating world, I mean, I just saw so much of it again and it was just like, wow. And that's what gave me the tools to do all this stuff because I was thrown into this, you know, after having to start dating again. And it was terrifying for me. It was absolutely terrifying because I had a lot of uh, wounding. I had a lot of issues. I was carrying a lot of baggage. I had no self-esteem after a broken marriage. I mean, I just, I didn't even think I was attractive like a man would even want, and this is honest, that even a man would want to even date me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to overcome, and it took years, and thank God I had male friends mm-hmm. who are, some were my lovers, who kept saying to me, Tammy, there's nothing wrong with you. Tamron, there's nothing wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. it's, you know, so, yay, you know, I say at one point in my life, I hated men and then, man, now I love them. <laughs> I, me too. I hear you. I'm the same, same. I'm like, well, give me some, get my hands on some. some. Yeah, you want more. My man, <laughs> <you know? laughs> the more men in my life, the better, because yeah, it's, it's just amazing. And my relationship with men now is so powerful um, because I honor them and they have their issues too. And that's another thing where the reason why I'm working with couples is because I did get a lot of men approaching me when I first started writing these programs and doing work with people. And I just found it was hard because men trusted me so much that they would think, oh, I'm their perfect woman and, you know, they'd want to marry me and whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm just here to help you. Um, 
so, you know, working with men is great, but now it's easier when they bring their partners, if they're women, because I can help them both. And that's right. one of the things that I do have on my show now once a month is I give a platform to men. Um, and I bring men on the show that just have stories or, you know, anything cool. They don't have to have a book or programs or whatever. It's just I think more men need to have a voice about sexual issues because the focus has been a lot about women, you know, um, and it's great. But I, I think we need more opportunities for men to come out and really speak because women will learn um, as well if they're listening to what the men have to say. Absolutely, and vice versa. I mean, I've learned so much from working with uh, both both women and men. And it really, in working with men and helping and supporting them and healing their sexuality, my my whole view, my whole concept and approach to men, it radically transformed. It was actually very healing for me to support men in their sexual healing. It was healing for me because I got to see another side, you know. And Tamarin's going to fill me in here. Tamarin, what is my sexual sexual personality archetype? Uh, Debbie, my guess would be maybe when you were younger, you always wanted to be like an actress or maybe even like in the movies, like a porn star or something, something where it's, yeah, you've been on screen. Where I'm going to be on screen and filmed. And you know what? Yeah. I, I, you, we would have to say, so absolutely, I was a theater major in, um, in, at Wayne State University in Detroit, so I definitely, I was in the theater and acting and definitely wanted to be in the movies. And I just thought of this just now. I've actually fulfilled that fantasy, Tamron, with our with our authentic com. I get filmed. Fil- I was filmed ha- receiving a vulva massage and and doing lingam pleasuring. So there we go. So I, and not only uh, movies, but I'm a, a sex educator, porn star. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? Um, it's it's that you know we do it, but you know even in the fantasy, it was like you know. Who knows what people are thinking about it and, you know, more people see it or whatever. So if we just go back and change that energy and knowing, like even I said to you after I watched it, like it was so tastefully done, Yes. you know. So there could have been something even in doing that where, you know, you might have been afraid of, you know, what people are going to think. And even though you did it, you needed to do it for work. Even when you change that energy even around the videos now, um, it can even expand that energy. So, you know, people would receive that from watching the video. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really good point because that was it was a uh, it was a risk that we took and, and we just couldn't think of how to convey that information in a way that was actually going to be, you know, useful to people without just getting down and dirty and doing it. Yeah. And it was. It was tastefully I'm not a big porn fan myself personally. I mean, yeah, everybody gets turned on by watching people have sex. It's a human thing. Um, I totally agree, but you know, porn to me was just it was too cold. I always felt very um cold watching porn yes uh, you know yes. so i'm just not a big fan of it i'd rather have sex <laughs> yes. I, and listen to my partners and you know learn from my partners and talk to people and uh yeah and to be honest men have told me some pretty amazing things and i've learned a lot about myself as a woman and you know and i don't know it might have to do with my age too i mean i'm 49 i've had kids like i said you know i've been single i've been married i've been um you know, now divorced and back on the dating world. And for four years, I didn't date anybody after because I had a lot of self-esteem that I had to regain. So, you know, I've had different aspects of it. And, you know, it it's all learning, you know, and I embrace it all. And, uh, yeah, so that's what makes me the expert. You know, I, it's my life, right? Yes. So that is why you're a sexual intimacy lifestyle expert because it is the lifestyle you lead. You walk, exactly. you walk in your talk. Exactly. And I'm just, I'm more like a portal. Like, you know, the fantasy stuff really helps people to see who they are because I can take all of my education on different things and to help people. And then even, for example, so even, you know, people might even have other issues, other fantasies they want to fulfill. And that's where I can even say, like, you know, for example, um, you know, just might have something else and it might just come up that, you know, like we talked about earlier in the show, women just literally wanting that fantasy of having an amazing orgasm with their partner. And that's where I jump in and say, okay, let's go through that, see what the trauma is, whatever. But in order to really help them further, that's when I bring on experts such as yourself and other people in books and I say this is who you need to connect with and that's why I like to affiliate with other people is because it's about a win-win for everybody you know 
Yeah, and we all have our calling. And my gift, what I realized, was that people confide in me right off the bat. They feel safe around me. They start telling me their sexual stories. Like, I mean, I had my health food store here in southern Ontario for four years open. There I am standing making smoothies and whatever, serving people, and they're telling me their sexual problem, blah, out in the open while I'm standing there making their food. And so I literally had to start looking at that and go, how can I serve these people better? The numbers that are rising every day, because like I said, research shows um, 95% of all people do have sexual fantasies. And I just, you know, it frees you up, you know, to just A, talk about it, admit you have one, you know, we are human. And if human beings are all having the same fantasies in different parts of the world and for all these years, then, you know, we need to embrace that because it's real. Well, yeah, it's real and it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. I mean, what you just did with me, the alchemy, I love that word, the alchemy of it, turning, turning that pain into, into passion and joy yeah. and celebration. So I want yeah. to thank you so much, Tamarin, for joining thank us. You. All right, Tamarin, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And, uh, and if I get to live out my fantasy this weekend or next weekend or whenever weekend it happens, I will, I'll let you all know, too. I'll let you know how it goes. So uh, join us next week. <laughs> 